Yo guys, what is up? Max in a Wonderlands video and today we're going over which class is right for you in Wonderlands. I have now played all of the classes at level 40, Chaos level 20, and I want to talk about some of the pros and cons of each of the classes as well as some of their synergies and give you a tier list of what I think is the strongest class in Wonderlands as well as the weakest. I hope you guys enjoy the video. I hope you learned something new from it. Let's get right into it. So we're going to have a section for each of the classes, and then we'll get into a tier list where I tell you what, in my opinion, is the quote-unquote strongest class in Wonderlands. And we're starting out with the Spore Warden. Now, the Spore Warden is a ranged class. You're always on class feet. Is a mushroom companion that will deal poison damage to nearby enemies. Your action skills, you have got one of the best action skills in the game, in my opinion, in Barrage, which you get three charges of. It's a shotgun blast of arrows, and you've also got Blizzard. The reason that Barrage is so great is at endgame is it's got lower cooldown and you can hold three charges of it, meaning there's a lot of annoyance that's synergized with on action skill start, and you can just always keep up, for example, this 40% gun damage, which is really nice to have. Now, for your skill tree, your left side of the tree is going to be more focused on ability damage, um, increasing the damage of your arrows, increasing the damage of your blizzard. Your middle tree is very much going to be focused on your companion and buffing up your companion. And then your right side of the tree is going to be focused on gun damage. Now, the Spore Warden's strongest skills are the capstone, play the angles, but possibly even stronger than that is Wrath of Nature. One of the best combos you can use on the Spore Warden is getting a class mod to increase the skill Wrath of Nature. Whenever the Fate Maker deals ability damage to an enemy, the affected enemy takes increased damage from all sources for a duration. At six out of three, you're going to get a 108% damage increase against enemies that are affected by ability damage. Now, you can shoot your arrows into a group of enemies and then all of them will take 108% increased damage, but with your capstone, the Fate Maker's gun critical hits have a chance to ricochet, dealing reduced ability damage to nearby enemies, meaning all of your gunshot crits have a chance to be ability ricochets, meaning that just by shooting your weapons, you're going to be getting Wrath of Nature, which not only increases all the damage that you deal, but it'll also increase the damage that your teammates deal, making the Spore Warden a great class to have. I recommend... If you're going to go with the Spore Warden, uh, two really strong synergies is to go with the Berserker. The Spore Warden has a focus on like poison damage and cryo damage, and you can even further that cryo damage by going with the Berserker to get increased frost damage, increased damage against enemies that are slowed, increased movement speed and frost efficiency. If you're going wanting to go like a cryo Spore Warden build, the other option is to go with a Stabomancer. The Stabomancer has got great gun damage, movement speed, increased the damage, and more status effect things. And you can play yourself a Spore Warden Stabomancer or a Spore Warden Berserker as a ranged class. Up next, we have the Berserker. Now, the Berserker is a cryo kind of melee character that's class feat is becoming enraged. While you are enraged, you're going to deal bonus frost damage with all of your attacks. The Berserker skill tree focuses on dealing cryo damage, increasing the damage that you deal with cryo. And it is to note that enemies that are cryoed will take more damage from melee attacks. So you can kind of play this character as a melee character or as a gun damage character and your class skills or your action skills are Dreadwind, which allows you to spin around in a circle like a cyclone where you're going to deal melee damage or a percentage of your melee weapon damage on every hit. And then Feral Surge, which is a leaping attack with an insta-kill threshold. One cool way that uh, you or two cool ways that you could play Berserker. One is as a ranged class with your frost damage. You can get a class mod with points into Icebreaker, which is going to give you up to 60% increased damage against frozen enemies for all damage sources, as well as increasing your frost efficiency and movement speed. You can play this character at ranged. Um, and one way that I've been doing that is with also Blood of the Fallen. When you're going to kill an enemy, you're going to increase your action skill cooldown and also add duration if you have an action skill active pairing that with the spore wardens blizzard to basically keep up a tornado that's always going to be freezing enemies constantly giving you that aoe control and constantly letting you deal that damage the other cool thing that you can go with the berserker is if you want a multi-class with either the stabomancer or the graveborn and i want to mention graveborn here because the graveborn is going to have a lot of dark magic things and then you can play the berserker as a melee dark magic character and you can extend the graveborn's action skill which basically makes you 
unkillable with blood of the fallen so you can just keep running around meleeing enemies dealing cryo damage and dealing dark magic damage to constantly keep healing Next up, we've got the Spell Shot, and the Spell Shot is kind of the dedicated mage class of this game in terms of using spells. You've got two action skills, one that's going to allow you, Ambihextrus, to use two spells at all times. You're going to sacrifice an action skill slot to equip another spell, and your other action skill is Polymorph, which will allow you to transform an enemy into a sheep, and when you're shooting at that sheep, you can just cast free spells at them. Like, it'll just trigger your equipped spell for free, so you can call down, like, six or seven spells on one enemy when they're transformed. Your always-on-class feat is Spell Weaving, which whenever you use your spell or you reload you're going to gain increased spell damage now the spell shot focuses very heavily on not only spell damage but converting that spell damage into guns you're going to feel very powerful with both your spells and guns for example you can get skills into magic bullets for converting any of your increases to spell damage into gun damage so you're going to focus on spells but you're going to get gun damage you're going to get fire rate on this class you've got another thing that called glass cannon which is going to allow you to not regenerate your shield anymore but you're going to get 30% spell damage you've got increased spell weaving stacks and your capstone is what really makes the spell shot sing it's sever the thread whenever you score a critical hit you have a chance to instantly reset all your spell cooldowns this is extremely strong and with a spell shot you can just use spells to kill enemies it's an extremely strong class and you can pair that with either the Stabomancer, because you need to score critical hits, to gain even more gun damage and spell damage, to deal more damage while you're moving fast and be a very elusive spell shot, or pair it with the Graveborn class, which has got a lot of spell damage increases, skills that will make all of your spells deal dark magic damage, and you're going to constantly be healing whenever you cast your spells. Uh, the spell shot was my started class and has done me very well into the end game. Up next, we've got the Clawbringer. Now, gonna be honest, this is the class that I've struggled with the most because your skill tree is really kind of a mix match of everything. Your class feat is a Wyvern Companion, which will deal fire damage for you. Your action skills are super cool. You've got two giant hammer skills, one to call down a hammer to hit enemies in a wide area, and one basically like a Thor hammer, which you can throw and recall back. Now, the Clawbringer's skill tree just kind of goes a little bit all over the place in terms of like you clearly want to deal fire and lightning damage uh your companion is definitely going to be helpful you're going to get bonus fire damage on your guns but where the Clawbringer, i'm going to be honest with you would really come together is storm smite whenever the fate maker activates her action skill she calls down elemental bolts that deal fire ability damage or lightning ability damage to nearby enemies this when paired with like the berserkers low action skills to just do dreadwind or feral surge on, on a bunch of enemies and keep calling down these bolts or maybe even going with spore warden and barrage and you'd spam barrage and you'd keep getting these bolts activating all of your other things like whenever you do fire lightning damage however this capstone has a cooldown of 25 seconds and that's where the Clawbringer is really hurting. I do hope that they buff this cooldown so that you can use it with low cooldown action skills and kind of make an action skill build with Storm Smite because at the moment, uh, the Clawbringer is a little bit hurt at the end game. Um, but yeah, if you wanted to go Clawbringer and spec it with someone, I'd recommend either the Berserker to kind of go like a Brawler or Bruiser class or the Graveborn, where you're going to get a bunch of companion skills, which you can pair with your other companion skills, and a lot of survivability. Um, but yeah, that is the Clawbringer. Next up, we've got the Graveborn class. Now, the Graveborn class features one of the best companions, in my opinion, in the Demi-Lich, which will cast Hellish Blast every time you cast a spell, which when you're using the spell shot and dual wielding spells, you're going to get a lot out of this companion. Your two action skills are Dire Sacrifice, which will sacrifice a percentage of your health to do a slam around you and Reaper of Bones, which you're going to constantly be losing health, but get bonus dark magic damage. Now, the Greyborn, I'm going to be honest, is one of the classes that just fits in with like any other class that you'd like to play because you're getting a lot of good things uh you're getting a lot of dark magic damage increases of dark magic damage on your spells you can go for a companion build and compare pair your companion build with the spore warden 
or the Clawbringer if you want to go into a companion build. You can pair with the Spell Shot if you want to go into a Spell Weaving build. You can go into the Stabomancer if you want to go for a Kill Skill build. Your like capstone will allow you to whenever you cast a spell to automatically automatically activate all of your kill skills which is crazy strong there are deathless gear in this game if you want to use the lord of edges you can get a class mod that'll give you plus 50 percent damage dealt at all time and go for a deathless build if you'd like there really is so many synergies with the Greyborn. one of my favorite ways to play Greyborn right now though is to go a companion build with faithful thralls to increase the damage dealt for every companion that you have as tdors in this game specifically the hydra tdors and the hydra companions count as summon companions meaning you can throw tdors and throw out uh some spells and then all of a sudden you've got like nine or ten companions on the field and you're going to be buffing all of their damage and they will be buffing your damage and there's a lot of different companion gear that you can rock with the graveborn and our last class to talk about is the Stabomancer. The Stabomancer specializes in critical hits and is a very well-rounded class to mix and match with any other character because they've got a lot of very generic good damage increases early on in their tree and then some more specific damage increases later on. You've got increases to spell damage, gun damage, melee damage. You've got increases to your movement speed increases to your damage based off of how fast you're moving, increased damage to enemies that you apply status effects to. You've got elusive, which will make you ignore damage and have a higher chance to ignore damage the faster you're moving. You've got a skill to increase the damage you deal after you critical hit. And then your capstone is executioner's blade that allows your spells and guns to deal melee damage or summon ethereal blades. The Stabomancer is a great multi-class option as a base to pair with the berserker to make a like crit cold melee build the spell shot to go a spell critical build or the spore warden for a full out ranged crit gun build uh the stabomancer has got a lot of great options and you should know that in the chaos chambers there's a lot of things to increase your movement speed via buffs making the stabomancer a great option because you can get class mods to spec points into swift death which will increase all of the damage that you deal the faster that you're moving and you're going to be moving pretty quickly uh and you can get lots of movement speed buffs so the stabomancer is a overall great choice now with that guys let's get into my tier list of what i think to be are the best classes ranked for wonderlands and before i rank these just know that all of these classes work at endgame they can all be made viable it just depends on how much time and gear you want to spend farming on them and as metas change weapons are added things are nerfed things are buffed i'm sure this will shift around and starting in at our b tier is the clawbringer i just think that the clawbringer is one of the only characters that i wouldn't actually spec all the way down to their capstone unless it's buffed next up in the a tier we have the berserker the berserker is just a very solid option in terms of either being a multi-class for added cryo damage and cryo efficiency or as a main class to use action skill based things and become more tanky i do think that cryo is one of the best elements in the game if not the best element so the fact that the berserker is focused on cryo and adding cryo damage to your class is really nice next up we've got the graveborn the graveborn is a class that you're going to multi-class into for survivability i see a lot of classes going base class and then graveborn or just playing a graveborn summoner as really really cool option and very strong at endgame Next up, we've got the Stabomancer. I consider the Stabomancer to be like the damage version of the Graveborn. If the Graveborn is more survivability based, the Stabomancer is just all damage. I wouldn't go all the way down to the Stabomancer's capstone, but the early skills on the Stabomancer add a ton of damage to any class. And then lastly, in our S tier, we have the Spore Warden and the Spell Shot. Uh, the Spore Warden is, in my opinion, the best gun user in the game. They have crazy ricochets with their abilities. They've got really low cooldowns on their action skills. They synergize really well with some of the strongest enchants and I think are going to be some of the fastest clearing classes. Um, then we've got the Spell Shot, who is just really strong with the dual spells. I think in a gun battle, the Spore Warden beats out the Spell Shot, but spells are really, really strong. And the Spell Shot can not only use spells, but also use guns. And my clear times on the Spell Shot are just my fastest that I've achieved. So you yeah, guys, that is it for the video. I hope you don't hate me for ranking them. I just wanted to share my opinions. And hopefully this video helps you pick what class you want to play on launch. I will catch y'all in the next one, guys. Take care. Peace. I was playing.